Welcome to this week's video. I've headed north of the border. It's time for my uh, annual autumn pilgrimage uh, up to Scotland. So we're going to go up to Glencoe. We're going to end, end up staying up near Fort William. Uh, but this is the first day and we're sort of heading heading north. And it's a tale of three locks. We're going to do Loch Lomond, uh, Loch Ard and Loch Chon. So this is Loch Lomond behind me. You can see those some fantastic rocks just leading out. Nice leading line out into Loch Lomond itself. There's a pan across. You got that lone tree, so we're definitely getting a shot of that. And uh, oh, and there's the boss. Yeah. So it's going to set up a little shot here. Like I say, I'm going to get that lone tree. We've got some mist on the water and not over on the hills on the on the far side. And the obvious composition really is to is to go vertical. You've got uh, three little boulders and a few reeds. Those three boulders uh, act as a lovely little leading line. You could take the tree in its isolation with its reflection, but I, I think those rocks really add to the composition. So I've taken a shot vertical. Let's say we've still got that mist up on the hills, on the hilltops. Uh, so now I've just flipped over, um, getting a horizontal shot, nice landscape shot. Um, I'm having a focus stack, uh, but the other thing I'm also doing is I'm just trying a few different shutter speeds as well. Uh, it's glassy smooth. We had a couple of paddle borders go out, but it's, uh, there's very little wind, so it's soon settled down. We're getting some nice reflections. We'll roll off some shots. And then I think I'm going to flip around and uh, maybe get a similar shot with these uh, big boulders going out into the water. Uh, it's just an alternative view. Um, not quite as exciting, not quite as nice, but yeah. Yeah, let's get a shot of this tree and then let's flip over to the boulders. What I've done is I've moved around the rocks, looking at different sizes, different compositions, just depending on whether I'm on the left or the right hand side. And I think the tempting thing to do is to include all the rocks. You get a longer leading line from the shoreline, but I felt that it just looked a little bit too cluttered, a little bit too busy. So what I've done is I've zoomed past and I'm just getting the last few rocks. It just looks a little bit more minimalistic. And I'm looking across straight over Loch Lomond, over to those hills, and they look absolutely gorgeous. They've got just that lovely hint of orange autumn glow. They look superb. Sadly, we've lost the mist by the looks of things, but you can't have everything. Uh, I'm going to have to work quick because I think I'm going to start losing the reflections. I think the wind's just picking up a touch. Uh, again, I'm torn between um, landscape, horizontal and vertical. The obvious thing, again, is probably go horizontal. You want to get in that big vista, you want to get in all those hills. But naturally, that, that long leading line of rocks makes you want to go vertical. So I'm really torn. As always, belt and braces, I'll take both and see which, ones I, which one I prefer. And as always, if these images are any good, here they come. Right then, that's it for this location. We're going to move on to uh, Loch Ard and then Loch Chon. So, uh, yeah, I've never been to this location. I've, I've driven along Loch, uh, Loch Lomond plenty of times, but uh, middle of Rocky Bay, I think it's called. Never been here before. And uh, yeah, lone tree, rocks, and just let me spin you around. <laughs> and that's how close the car's parked. 
Now that's my kind of location. So yeah, let's push on. Let's see what the rest of the day brings. Right, we've arrived at Lockhart and uh, there's this little rowing boat that uh, I was going to say is a little bit weathered but it's uh, rotting away is what it's doing. So that's uh, that's that's the foreground interest sorted and there's a lovely little boat house and the, and the lock further down and there's the jetty as well but the problem is it, around the jetty is just an absolute muddy mess. It's doing nothing for me as, as an image in that so yeah I'm probably going to go vertical here and just uh, just try and get the boat in the foreground, boat house in the background and just the jetty just creeping in then on the left hand side. And try and minimise how much of that muddy, muddy mess you can see. Uh, yeah, I'll flip you around and you can see what I'm looking at. I've just walked along the uh, along the road that runs along the side of the lock. Um, probably haven't even gone 50 yards. And there's another jetty, you know, and another private garden. So we'll be a bit more respectful this time. We won't, we won't cross over the boundary. We won't go into the, the private area. But you literally are on the roadside, so it's fairly easy. You just need to get get off the actual tarmac and on, onto the grass. And there's a nice little nice little shot then. Facing across at the boathouse again. That's all dark and it's got those dark moody woods behind it, forest behind it. Um, what you've got with the, with the jetty, that's in bright sunlight. And there's a couple of lily pads all nicely lit up, nice and bright. Uh, there's a lovely bit of contrast there, so hopefully I can uh, make something of that scene. So I've got two issues. The first one is I'm at the side of the road as a van goes past, you can see that. That makes a bit of a nightmare for doing any video work for you guys. And the other issue I've got, which is more related to the photography, is you can see I'm squinting. There's a load of bright, low autumn sunshine coming across. Uh, Biggest issue there is it's hitting the side of the lens. I'm going to get a load of refraction. I'm going to get all those le all that lens flare. So I'm going to have to shade the shade the lens. I don't bring lens lens hoods with me. I use case magnetic filters, and I'm constantly popping them on and off the CPL and the ND, and it just makes that an absolute nightmare if you've got a hood on. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to fire off a shot. I've got a two second timer on, and just use my hand. I'll just cover the lens. That just helps. So hopefully these images look pretty good. So yeah, we'll fire off a few shots and see what they look like. Heading back to the car and just spotted this little scene um, just over the fence and sort of peeping between the trees bang opposite that little boat house and uh, it just it's oh, it's gorgeous got these backlit leaves uh, nice and golden just that that arm colors again so uh, hopefully this this shot um, looks as good to the naked uh, good on the camera as it does to the naked eye uh, just uh, just gonna fire off a shot now excellent just I love it when you get a little bonus shot
thought we'd left Lockhart, but driving along the road, look at those colours, look at those reflections. It's like a mirror. And we've got this fence leading off into the water. What's not to like about this, eh? eh? What an autumnal scene. So we quickly pulled over. I'm going to spin again there. Look, there we are. A couple of cars parked over there. Another one just at the side of the road. <laughs> My kind of photographer. Nice and easy. So, yeah, frame this up. Definitely going uh, for a landscape orientation for this one. Get in that vista. Get all that colour there, you know, on that side. Yeah, get the fence leading off. <sighs> it's just gorgeous. Absolutely beautiful here. Not a breath of wind. I'm just having to be a little bit quick because there's a guy getting ready to go out in his kayak. Yeah, obviously that'll... Uh, That'll be the end of those uh, perfect reflections, uh, that, that mirror-like uh, smooth water. So, really quickly, I'm going to rattle off this shot. Right, well, I've made it to Loch Chom. Uh, almost gave up. Uh, it's a real muddy mess. I think they've had a lot of rain. We had uh, Storm Babbitt, which, to be honest, it affected uh, the east coast. I were hoping over here, sort of, well, sort of central and western sort of sides of Scotland. Might, might have got away with it, but it's. Uh, we were just talking to a couple of paddleboarders, and she was saying that it, uh, it looks like they've had a load of rain, and it's, it's not normally this boggy. But, uh, yes, wellies are on. Um, clambered through the undergrowth. Anyway, I think it were worth it. It's yet another boathouse, it's more reflections, it's more autumn colour, it's just blowing me away, it's absolutely uh, superb. Best, uh, the best autumn, autumn colour I've had in October in Scotland and I've been coming here th literally this week every year for the last three years and uh, I think this is the best yet. But autumn's been late this year, I think most people have been saying that, we, we, we had some strange you know, hot, hot spells in September and October so yeah, well I'm glad, it, uh, it's meant that these colours have stayed around long enough for me to be able to capture them. So uh, yeah, this definitely is... Uh, the last of these lock these three locks so we've done lock lomond we've done done lock hard and we've done uh, lock chom so now we're pushing on up into the western highlands uh heading for fort william so until next time i'll be seeing you